It's our last NFL DFS show of the calendar year as we prepare week 15 cash lineups on the main slate for DraftKings and FanDuel, and it's coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Eric, the NFL is heating up, getting really, really interesting. Uh, and fantasy is getting interesting. It's the beginning of uh, fantasy playoffs for the year-long leagues. Uh, and uh, really, really becoming more and more interesting with what is happening from an injury standpoint uh, from for DFS as well. Lots of upsets last uh, last week. This continues to be uh, exciting. We're going down to the home stretch where you question some of the motivations of some teams. Some teams are going to experience bad weather. Other teams are getting close to locking up playoff spots. So we start to wonder what's got their, what their motivations are. Really strange uh, part of the year. But this is our last show, Michael, of the calendar year. Don't worry, folks. We're going to be back in January of 2024 talking about the wild card week, and we'll be having shows throughout the playoffs. So uh, stay in there with us. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that red subscriber button followed by the, L the bell icon so you don't miss any of our content. But before we talk about week 15, Michael, I think we got to talk about week 14 in our DFS Hub contest. I want to take a look who pulled off the victory this week. <laughs> well, let's pull it up and see. Well, 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 Michael, the number one spot. If I was you, I'd say you squeaked in, but <laughs> by 19 points dominating. Let's hear it. What? Uh, I love that the season started with me winning the contest in week one. And we wrap up our season with you winning the contest uh, in week 14. Tell us about this lineup and how you put it together. Well, I just learned from the master, Eric. You know, it took this long for you to convince me how to, to do this right. Uh, no, we uh, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, a number of these folks. You know, as always, you got to try and find a few bargains that are related to last minute changes was able to do that uh, specifically with Zach Wilson um, and, uh, you know, kind of surprised by that Browns pricing as well. But really what made uh, this team was the Debo Samuel pick up. Uh, I think they got the numbering around, but also Drake London just having a really, really uh, big week. So it's pretty, uh, pretty fun to finish out on top uh, and uh, hoping we can do similar things for our viewers this week as well. No, great job. You might have broke, come close to breaking the 200 mark if Christian McCaffrey did get pulled down on that long 70-yard run. And because he was gassed, he went out of the off the field for one play. And, of course, they ran it in on that one. But awesome. Great job. Um, and great job by our community. Uh, Michael, I've had a lot of fun this year, not only breaking the lineups uh, in the main slate down with you, but – getting all the comments in the comment section. Please keep them coming for week 15. And also give us feedback. Michael and I almost discuss on a weekly basis. Do we want to change the format? Are the shows too long? Should they be shorter? Um, should we cover GPP? Should we just do cat? What do we think about the core player format? Please put in the comment section what your thoughts are. We absolutely would consider that feedback, not only for the playoffs uh, in January, but next year when we come back. All right, let's talk about week 15, Michael. We only have two core players. Core players meaning players that we like in our cash lineup for week 15 main slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. And, you know, it's always got to start and end with the best player in the land, Christian McCaffrey, who we just talked about. He is $10,000, $10,500 on FanDuel, $9,300 on DraftKings. That's expensive, but you get a all-star player in an all-star matchup. Um, Christian McCaffrey plays uh, at Arizona. San Francisco has by far the highest implied total on the main slate, 
31. They're a massive 13 and a half point uh, favorite. You know what you get with McCaffrey. 20 plus carries, goal line, a lot of work in the passing game. And as the Niners do well, he does well. And he faces the 30th ranked Arizona rush defense. I think it's going to be a big week for McCaffrey. Yeah, got to get a guy like him in there with such a high floor and obviously the additional high ceiling. Uh, going to save some money at the quarterback position uh, with a guy who's been very consistent in the last few weeks. Really, offense is clicking well for this guy. He's 7,200 on FanDuel and 6,000 on DraftKings. It's Matthew Stafford uh, going up against the worst passing defense in the NFL, the Washington Commanders. Uh, Stafford's had uh, 250 plus yards and three plus touchdowns in the last three games. Uh, and that includes games against Baltimore and Cleveland, you know, two of the better defenses in the league. And here he gets to go up against a team that's been absolutely atrocious uh, uh, against the pass and, and can put up points. So it's not like the, the Rams can really pack it in. So I think the Rams will put up a lot of points this week and take advantage of it. And Matthew Stafford uh, looks to benefit from that. So let's get him in there. All right, so one really expensive player and one uh, reasonably priced guy. Gives us a little room to make some moves elsewhere. Let's see how we build lineups on DraftKings and FanDuel, starting with FanDuel. Okay, Michael, uh, we have a little over $6,000 to spend, and I'm going to spend it right away at running back. We have a couple of games that we want to exploit here on FanDuel. We already uh, picked on San Francisco the highest implied total, another high-scoring game with the Rams. The other game I want some exposure to is the Dallas-Philadelphia game. And get that with Tony Pollard. Uh, this is the highest over-under. And at a reasonable $7,000, we can get Tony Pollard uh, in the lineup. Look, if you look at his game log, it's no secret that he was a disappointment for a lot of this year. But it's a new Tony Pollard. In the last three weeks, he has had touches of 19, 23, and 23. That's excellent. That corresponds with the Cowboys' offense just completely going off in the last five games. They have scored in the last five games, total 33, 33, 4, 41, 45, and 49. I love this Cowboy offense. And I love getting the main piece of this in Tony Pollard um, that would get him in our lineup. And on the other side, who said, Michael, these guys can't get along in the same backfield? Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, I know. They're no longer both on the Cowboys' backfield. Elliott is now on the New England Patriots. And I feel like I have to give you a couple of caveats. I usually come on here, Michael, and praise the concept of taking advantage of high-scoring games making sure you get a really nice high implied total. The New England Patriots, oh, implied total is 14. 14. Uh, but, but before you, before you <laughs> mute the, the, your, uh, your, the, the, your speakers, I love Ezekiel Elliott this week at only 6,500, as long as Ramondre Stevenson is out. Look, Stevenson got a high ankle sprain. That usually puts you out multiple weeks. He's only missed one week so far. And we're filming on a Wednesday. He did not practice today, Wednesday. So all indications look like he's going to miss the game. And if he does, you can expect Ezekiel Elliott to be a bell cow. In the last two weeks with Stevenson out, he has gotten 21 touches and 29 touches look at his involvement in the pass game getting seven receptions he is the goal line back i know for the one time that the patriots may get the ball around the goal line but i really like uh the the exposure we get at such a small price michael yeah, no, and, and Stevenson's not going to play. I can almost guarantee you that, not just because of his injury, but also because of the Patriots situation. I, I'd be surprised if he even comes back at all this year. So Zeke's going to continue to benefit from that. Uh, and I agree with you. I think Pollard is is starting to heat up now that the offense has changed a little bit. Uh, and I think we might even see some more fantasy points out of him. He could be a playoff uh, winner for 
for a team that's been disappointed in him. They were able to make the playoffs uh, without him playing well. Guess what they can do with him playing well? All right, so four rock-solid uh, players. I'm going to add a five. And you would not believe at the beginning of the season that you'd be able to get this guy for 8200 I declare, Michael, he is back. Cooper Cup at 8200 Um, Look at his last week. This is what you'd expect from Cooper Cup. You have a healthy Matthew Stafford. Uh, Cooper Cup was his usual self. And he gets the world's best matchup. Michael already talked about it with Stafford. He places Washington. Look how tough the defenses he had to face the last two weeks. Cleveland and Baltimore. It's going to just be like a picnic for him against Washington. 32nd ranked against the pass. Why? Because their secondary sucks. And then they got rid of Chase Young and Marquez Sweat. They don't have no pass rush. Why are they not worse than 32? Because there's only 32 teams. If we can include college teams, Michael, I think they would be ranked lower than 32. But uh, I'm thrilled to get Cooper Cup in the lineup. How about another number one wide receiver? Let's go on to the resurgent Jets um, at $6,900, Garrett Wilson. There has never been a question, to me at least, in Garrett Wilson's talent and his role in this receiver's uh, hierarchy. He is a, by far the number one receiver on the Jets. All we needed was somewhat competent, basically competent, quarterback play. And now I can't believe I'm saying Zach Wilson is back. And you look at the, the the log. Garrett has done better when Zach has been the quarterback. That should be uh that will be the case this week. Happy to get Garrett Wilson in the lineup. Yeah, Garrett Wilson sneakily had a really nice season in terms of yards and uh receptions. He just hasn't gotten in the end zone uh much, but uh they have tried to get him the ball near the end zone. He's kind of the the, you know, the, the the receiver of choice, obviously. And Cooper Cup, you know, the fact that he is, I think anyone on this in this matchup is exciting to get in. I think that the Rams are going to really be able to exploit that Washington D. So, man, look at this all-star lineup that we have so far from a fantasy perspective. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. That's it, Michael. I'm leaving because I don't, don't want to talk about. Okay, so we're going to have to save money from here on out, folks. Um because we can only spend $4,500. So we'll start at wide receiver, get a capable guy. I love his price at 5,700, Elijah Moore uh, on the Cleveland Browns. Look, I fully know that um, Amari Cooper is the number one wide receiver. He is back. He is going to eat into some of the targets that Elijah Moore has enjoyed over the last couple of weeks. However, I think Joe Flacco is is playing the best quarterback king that the Browns have seen this year, and that includes uh, Watson. Maybe um, definitely a step over uh, the other backups, and he throws the ball down the field, which is helpful to uh, Elijah Moore, and he draws a very nice matchup with the Chicago Bears as a twenty twenty third ranked uh, passing defense. All right, so let's go over to tight end, and let's go to, at 4,700, Tucker Craft. Who is Tucker Craft? He's not just a cheese, ladies and gentlemen. Um, happy to get Craft in the lineup at only 4,700. Why have we not heard more about him? Because he was buried behind Luke Musgrave, who is on IR and absolutely is out this particular week. Two, three, and four receptions. I think you're going to see closer to that four or more receptions this week. Why? Because he's got a tremendous matchup uh, facing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 30th against the pass. 31st uh, against tight ends. Um, so there's Kraft. And the last player is the defense, Carolina Panthers. Now, they're a punt defense. I like them a lot more than the two defenses that were below them. They are at home, and, you know, they face, look, they're, they're last in sacks. Not something you like to see in the defense you're picking, okay? I get it. They're only $3,300. But look at their opponent that they're facing, right? Um, 
They're facing the, the Atlanta Falcons. Now, there is a concern. Atlanta gets up on them. They like to run, and maybe they're not taking too many chances in their offense. <laughs> But the Panthers are only three-point dogs. They keep this game close. I like a defense going up against quarterback Desmond Ritter. So, Michael, you were just praising this lineup, and now I've added more Kraft and the Panthers D, all bargains. Any comments about those three guys? Uh, you had to save money. Uh, and I think uh, you, you, uh, I think you did the best you could with what you had left. <laughs> Michael, that's like what you'd say with after a McDonald's meal. How was McDonald's? Well, I had to save money. But um, yeah, right. I really like this lineup, Eric. Uh, you know, we got a superstar lineup uh, at the top there, and that's what you want. Uh, and even the guys that you have here at the bottom are kind of decent floor guys, which is what you want in a cash lineup. So looks good. Should we go over to yeah, uh, just one last comment? Watch the news on Ezekiel, even though Michael has guaranteed you that uh, Stevenson is out. And of course we listed Elliot and the flex. He plays early. Make sure you move uh, one of the running backs who play late uh, into your flex shot. So you have more flexibility. All right. So let's go to DraftKings. All right, Eric, here we are. We've spent a, a few bucks because of McCaffrey, and uh, that leaves us 34700 or about 5000 a player. Um, but we're going to spend some more money right out of the gate, and we're going to continue to attack this Washington defense uh, and, and take advantage of uh, uh, Kyron Williams' really utilization by the Rams, not just in the run game, but in the pass game. He's getting... 20 plus touches a game. He's averaged 100 yards in his last six contests played, and he's getting to the end zone on average once uh, each time as well. And that includes games against Baltimore, Cleveland, and Philadelphia. Uh, so this this Washington defense isn't much better against the run, uh, and Kyron Williams gets involved in the passing game in a good way as well. So uh, just a lot of really nice floor with him and some upside as well. Just you know, really been a fa fantasy hog. Uh, especially because he's involved in the passing game. So let's get him in there. Uh, and then let's let's uh, uh, go with uh, at the wide receiver position. Let's go with a guy who's starting to look like really the number one athlete on uh, his team being used similar to Debo Samuel for the Niners. It's Jalen Reed. Uh, he's forty nine hundred dollars. Thank you. Uh, going up uh, against really the one of the worst passing defenses. We already talked about him a little bit when you talked about Tucker Craft. Uh, look at the, you know, 10 targets this last week and four carries. He is getting the ball. He's kind of being utilized as their special tool. Uh, and because of that, he's getting in the end zone. Three touchdowns in the last four games. Um, really like his upside at $4,900. Nice little price tag. What do you think about these? First two picks. Yeah. Reed needs a better uh, average per catch there. Uh, uh, 3.4. I know people with a better GPA than, 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 than that. But, no, I agree the fact that they want to get his hands on the ball. And I think Love is going to back, bounce back off a kind of a rocky start. They have been playing so well before this past week. But the thing that I like about all the picks before Jaden Reed is you're really taking advantage of great opportunities. You got to worry a little bit about the weather uh, at, at at quarterback, and I think that Ram game is going to be in L.A. Great environment. Picking on Washington, I think, is is uh, is is so critical, and we already talked about why we like McCaffrey. So good start. Well, I'm going to save some money with these next two picks so that I can get more excited about my last two, three. So uh, I, I'm going to go with a guy who's really similar to Jalen Reed um, on this New York Giants uh, offense that was so bad earlier and is looking a little bit better now that Tommy DeVito has uh, figured a few things out. It's Wondell Robinson, kind of similar to Jalen Reed, really used uh, as their super athlete. He's $3,700. Um, and, uh, he was getting, you know, five targets a game. Now it's, you know, seven plus he got these two rushing attempts this last week. He's just a, really a superstar athlete. And I think the more that you see guys like that get involved and how the fans respond to it, the more the temptation is to 
to manufacture opportunities for them. And I think you're going to see that both with Jalen Reed and Wondell Robinson. Uh, so again, trying to get someone at a low price tag that has a pretty high floor uh, and a little bit of upside. You know, he's not going to be in the end zone multiple times because of the team he plays for, uh, similar to what we we talked about uh, with uh, Ezekiel Elliott. You know, obviously not the same number of touches, but, um, uh, you know, I think he's just got, uh, he's just an athlete and he's going to get involved. So similar uh, so our last guy is also inexpensive, and he just so happens to be uh, uh, really the only guy that is getting the ball right now. It's uh, Juju Smith-Schuster at $3,600, and that's because Demario, De Demario Douglas has been out. Um, and, you know, I think that the Patriots have benefited, you already talked about Zeke, um, from the better play of Zappi. Uh, and so... Um, uh, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster is just a possession receiver. He actually had 90 yards receiving on on four catches this last week. You know, not a lot of upside again. I don't think somebody who's going to – not a lot of breakaway speed here, but want to save this money so we can do some other things uh, at these last few positions. So, you know, go ahead and, and, and complain about these two picks, but I know not much you can say until you see what I'm doing next. Oh, you know what? <laughs> So uh, no, I, I actually like uh, Wando Robinson. I, I think again, uh, playing in a dome against New Orleans, and uh, I think the if you believe Devito will uh, will have to throw the ball a bit to to keep up with New Orleans. Uh, I think he's going to be a big part of it, and he's super cheap. So let's see what you got going at tight end. Yeah, so you talked a little bit um, uh, about this uh, this matchup with Elijah Moore, but I think it's uh, I, I want to go with the tight end position because there's just a nice chemistry uh, that um, uh, that Flacco has with Njoku, and really, let's face it, Njoku's been the number one target for this team. Look at what he's done all season long. Really, it's not just been the last couple of games. He's consistently targeted. Uh, he's getting, let's see, 10 plus targets and 50 plus yards in the last five games. You know, what else can you ask for from a tight end? Uh, and he's a, a good possession guy. He's also used near the goal line, getting in the end zone a couple times this last week. And the Chicago passing defense is week 23rd um, in the league. Uh, and Flacco has just been huge for the receiver position and the tight end position for the Browns, uh, maybe not quite as dangerous with his legs, but that's better for guys like Njoku. So uh, got to get him in there. And we're going to also uh, add to this lineup um, kind of uh, really similar, not this, no, not the same upside that you get um, with uh, McCaffrey and Williams, but, uh, you know, just very consistent. And that's Mostert at 7,100 dollars going up against the Jets who are strong passing defense and with uh, Tyreek being you know maybe not a hundred percent that puts Raheem Mostert in a spot where he's going to continue to do look what he's done the last four of the last five games he's had 85 plus yards and he's getting in the end zone multiple times uh, he's kind of an automatic touchdown every game he doesn't get involved in the passing game uh, especially with a chain back, uh, but uh, he gets all the rushing touches for the most part, and especially the touches near the goal line. Uh, you could see a chain, you know, dip into that like he did a little bit earlier in the season, uh, but it didn't look like that happened the last week or the week before that. Uh, and so you tack New York Giants on or Jets, excuse me, on the ground, and that's exactly what I think Mostert will do. It's supposed to rain this weekend in Miami. Uh, which I think bodes well for the running game as well. Oh, and let me just finish up since I got one more. The defense, we have enough to get the by far number one scoring fantasy defense in the NFL, uh, and that's the Cowboys. If you look at what they've done each week, uh, on average, it is by far dominated. And in, the Buffalo uh, offense is no slouch. But, uh, it, you know, any Buffalo fan, unfortunately, knows that they do turn the ball over. Uh, and Dallas takes advantage of such things. Uh, and uh, Josh Allen holds the ball long as well. So, you know, Buffalo may give up some points here. 
but uh, they're going to turn the ball over and have some sacks. And so, you know, they just create up upside and a floor like really no other fantasy defense. Uh, so I, I want to take advantage of that as well. Boy, 37, 27, 21, 16. Uh, definitely can see the ceiling that these Cowboys uh, can, can have. Kind of like them a little more in GPP than, than cash. Um, but I understand it. You had the money to spend, uh, to, to spend. I will just say that in that same game, you have Buffalo. A lot depends on your outlook for the game. I actually think Buffalo is going to win this game. They're at home. Um, so their defense is $800 cheaper. Um, and, uh, let's just go to them real quick. Just to, just to take a peek. Um, again, they face a tough team in Dallas, obviously, but you, you, you like, uh, what you're, you're getting out of, uh, a lot of sacks, right? 42 sacks that this offense has had a defense has had in 13 games. Uh, which has provided you not the um, crazy up and down, uh, but kind of some consistent uh, uh, play. Depends on if you think that this, almost like who do you think is going to win, Buffalo or Dallas. And if you do think it's Buffalo, can you do something with this extra $800? It's at least something that you should consider. Yeah, fair point. So this is uh, our cash lineup for DraftKings, along with what we already presented on FanDuel. Uh, and so, you know, do do with it as you, you'd like. <laughs> so, so, Michael, this is amazing. This is our last show of the regular, of the calendar year and of the NFL regular season. But we will be back to talk about Wild Card Week from an NFL DFS perspective. We're also going to do shows with our predictions. I just want to take a pause uh, to thank all of our audience and their support of this channel. Um, any advice that you have, like I said about our channel, please put it in the, the comment section. But I just want to know, tell a little of the audience about our relationship that they may not know because we don't talk about it a lot. Uh, did I meet you on the street last week? Uh, no, I've known you for over 25 years that we have been friends. I think I'm responsible for creating the monster in you, which is fantasy sports. I think I brought you into fantasy football, but you've gone on. How many leagues are you in this year? Three. <laughs> okay, so, um, so anyway, uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, to do this. I don't think of you just as a friend, but, almost, but as a brother. And uh, uh, thanks for being such a great... Uh, co-host and i'm looking forward to an even better 2024 for fantasy football consultants but i have to say from a performance perspective i think we had a good 2023 were we right all the time absolutely not but i think uh if people followed us they, they certainly made more money than they lost in uh cash game lineups yeah, no, I agree with that, Eric. It's been a pleasure. Look forward to you know picking it back up in the new year, and want to thank our fans. I guess we could call them that our uh, supporters for for all the time and energy that they've given to us, and the comments that they put in the comment section, which is a plug to keep doing that. Thanks. All right, everybody. We wish each and everybody watching a safe and happy holidays and a very happy new year. Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll see you in 2024. Happy holidays. All right, we'll put two videos on the screen that we think that you'll enjoy.